Everyone who experiences combat is impacted by its consequences, whether you are preparing to deploy, are currently deployed, or have recently returned home. It is critical for you to be aware of combat and operational stress reactions and how to get help. Combat stress reactions are nothing new, and they are nothing to be ashamed of. The condition has been around for centuries in all wars and has been known by various names throughout history. Soldier's heart during the Civil War, shell shock in World War I, battle fatigue in World War II, and traumatic stress in Vietnam. Today, it's called combat stress, a term that encompasses all operational stress reactions. The Navy and the Marine Corps have put together comprehensive programs to reduce combat stress and to effectively manage combat stress reactions, utilizing experience from prior combat and peacekeeping missions. But most importantly, individual sailors and Marines must know what to expect, what to look for in themselves and their buddies, and how to get access to help if it's needed. As seen in military actions in Afghanistan and Iraq, service members, active and reserve, must learn to cope with their memories of the trauma of combat as well as the stress of keeping the peace while nations rebuild. Stress reactions do not just result from actual combat. Many military members have returned home disturbed by the aftermath and consequences of combat and the difficulties of peacekeeping missions. Seeing small children severely wounded, the sight and smell of dead bodies, the accidental deaths of unit members, and the constant stress of working in an environment where it may be unclear who or where the enemy is can all cause deep psychological stress. This stress can be compounded by sleep deprivation, uncertainty about the length of deployment, worries about loved ones at home, the climate, and working and living conditions. Service members returning from combat actions have talked about a variety of feelings. They report that sailors and Marines deployed to a war zone may experience guilt about surviving when others did not, fear about not being courageous enough, thoughts about whether things could have been done differently, feelings of isolation, a sense that no one else can understand, guilt about accidentally harming someone, sadness over the death or injury of a comrade, and worry about their reactions after returning home. Operational stress reactions are both physical and psychological. Psychological reactions include anxiety, difficulty concentrating or sleeping, irritability, loss of self-confidence, and sadness. Physical reactions are things like a racing heart, sweaty or trembling hands, even frequent urination and diarrhea. Remember, operational stress isn't a sign of weakness or insanity. These are normal reactions to abnormally stressful situations. Sometimes stress reactions appear immediately, but sometimes they may not occur until much later, even after returning from deployment. This can be confusing for the service member who may experience recurrent nightmares or thoughts about traumatic events, irritability, unexplained moodiness, relationship problems, or difficulties at work. In the worst of cases, a sailor or Marine may even think of suicide. So how can one cope with operational stress? Dealing with it early may keep it from developing into a psychiatric disorder, such as post-traumatic stress disorder or depression. Initially, the best way to deal with combat stress is to talk with buddies and unit members who are dealing with the same conditions, experiences, or memories that you are. Sharing your feelings, both negative and positive, with those who came through it with you can do much to soften the initial impact of the trauma. Also, many units now have debriefings during deployment to help members cope. Chaplains are also available. If symptoms persist or worsen, psychological support is readily available. Remember, you can best help your unit when you are mentally fit. Don't be afraid to seek help or to encourage someone else to do so. When a service member comes forward for help, the basic approach is called three hots and a cot, which means time to rest, relax, and receive counseling from a combat stress team 
before returning to your unit. The majority of people with combat stress reactions can be successfully helped in the field. After returning home, post-deployment screenings are held to make certain that service members get prompt help for any physical or mental health concerns. Sometimes these physical and psychological reactions don't go away or they get worse. In these cases, combat stress may lead to post-traumatic stress disorder. Some of the symptoms of PTSD are similar to those of combat stress reactions, but of longer duration, interfering with job performance and life at home. The symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder typically include nightmares or intrusive thoughts about the traumatic experience, avoiding reminders of the trauma, irritability, sleep problems, and anxiety. Other symptoms might include being easily startled or jumpy when you hear certain noises, feeling distant from your loved ones, and a constant feeling that you must remain alert for further trauma. If such symptoms are interfering with your level of functioning at work or at home, it's time to seek professional help. Remember, the sooner you seek help, the easier the symptoms will be to treat. Don't wait until relationship, legal, or disciplinary problems occur. The best decision is always to get help sooner rather than later. How does one go about getting help during or after deployment? The service member can access help through the unit medical team, mental health unit, fleet and family support centers, or Marine Corps community services. Each has specific programs in place to help returning service members and their families. First, put aside any preconceived ideas that getting help involves lying on a couch and having one's head shrunk. When you come in, you will initially meet with a mental health professional who will talk with you and listen to you about what is going on. Assess your symptoms and coordinate a treatment program tailored to your individual needs. This may include individual counseling to help you cope with anxiety, sadness, and anger. It may include group meetings with other service members who are coping with similar reactions. Other treatment components may be marital or family therapy and education about combat stress reactions. If you are diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder or depression, treatment may include medications. Most importantly, remember that the majority of service members who seek help will improve and recover. What about the fear that seeking treatment for combat stress will hurt your career? Navy and Marine Corps leadership fully support and encourage service members to get the help they need for combat stress reactions, recognizing that anyone from the most junior enlisted to the most senior commanding officer can be affected by combat stress. It is the failure to seek treatment that is far more likely to negatively impact a career. This series on operational stress is directed at three important groups, service members, members of their families, and command leadership. In the upcoming segments, I'll be interviewing a service member who sought help for PTSD and has recovered, a family member who has been impacted by their service member's stress reactions, and a senior leader whose unit has been affected by combat stress. You'll be interested to hear their stories.